Hi guys, uh, welcome back to the channel. Um, we're gonna do things a little differently this week. It, man, it has been so busy, so many different things going on. Uh, what I wanna talk to you about is uh, just a couple of things. First of all, you may notice I'm wearing a shirt and it says, Liederman Bell Bonds. Our love for credit cards is deep. <laughs> it got a sense of humor. You say, hey, why is this guy wearing this shirt? Well, because I was in jail. There. There you have it. Not recently. It was like two years ago. And it was for a marijuana charge. And I'll tell you why I'm wearing a shirt today. Because today, I'm finally off probation. Yay! Okay. Now, some of you are going to think, oh, that guy's a creep. And you'll leave the channel. I'm fine, because I don't, I don't need your energy and... Uh, close-mindedness if that's the case the rest of you wow today's today's reading is gonna be really interesting and let me just tell you <clears throat> yesterday I don't know if y'all know me I'm I'm spiritual now but I you know I didn't I never really considered myself religious but yesterday I just joined the church choir playing guitar so Hopefully, maybe I'll have some videos on a different channel I can put up to show you that down the road. But, uh, so needless to say, I, you know, I'm excited about that. And practicing guitar has taken up some of my time, etc. But, oh, what else? Yep, and so I wanted to apologize for not being able to make a topical video for this week. But I did just want to make sure that I get this... Um, uh, reading for next week out for you guys. All right, so it's funny because I actually did this reading on Wednesday or Thursday. No, Thursday is yesterday. I did this on Tuesday. So let me tell you what we're going to be uh, reading from today. Remember Chick Tracks? They're these things. You see? I don't know about you guys, but if you're anywhere near as old as I am, in the 80s, I remember I'd be walking around and be a kid, right? be like 9, 10, 7, 8, somewhere in that area. And I'd be walking around, and I'd just see these laying on the ground. And I'd pick them up, and they said, free, take them. So I'd pick them up and read them. And it was all about scaring people into not going to hell. All right. In fact, there's a Christmas, there's a play they do around Christmas where people are um, driving in a car, and they're not really driving in a car, right? They're on stage in two chairs, and they're pretending to drive in a car. And I, it's like Hell's Gates, Heaven's Fury, or something like that. And uh, if you know the name of it, and I'm getting it wrong, go, uh, go ahead and put it in the comments below, because you know I, I love corrections. I don't, I don't like to be wrong. On my facts. <laughs> so, <clears throat> anyway, I, I really believe that that play was inspired by one of these chick tracks. Because one of them uh, from a long time ago, I think it was like copyrighted the 70s or early 80s. And it was about a kid and he, you know, his parents told him to stay home and his conscience and the angels told him to stay home, but he wouldn't listen. He wanted to go out with his cool friend and his cool friend turned out to be the devil and left him uh, at night parked on <laughs> railroad tracks with a train coming. <laughs> they really, they really have some creative writers for these. Um, but the, the key theme in addition to that is it has Bible verses that explain the writer's positions and beliefs on what you should do and how you should live your life. So I thought, <laughs> and I was a little lazy, I thought, well, if libromancy works, you know, and, and I believe it does, which is why I'm doing these readings, I should be able to uh, say, okay, this is what I'm going to use as my alphabet. Essentially, that's what you're doing with libromancy. You're saying, okay, this is what I'm going to use as my alphabet. This book, that book, this set of books, these magazines, you know, this one page on this newspaper. And it's just like with any communication. If you have an alphabet of three letters, how much can you express? Probably not as much as an alphabet of 26 letters, you know. 
Same thing with the book. The more books you have, the more information and closer to a complete message you can get. But, wow, that was supposed to be short. It's been five minutes already. I'm going to try to wrap this up for you guys. <laughs> so here's the books we're working with today. We're working with this chick track called Your Big Moment. We're working with a chick track called... Oh, sorry. We're working with Edgar Casey's Story of Jesus by Jeffrey First. We're looking with, at the chick track called The Only Way. And there's one more. I See You. Yeah, that's the last one. The guy with the target on him. I See You. Chick Tracks. All right. You know, they're called Chick Tracks because they're by Chick Publications. All right. Here's three we didn't use, so I'll set those aside. All right. Here's the messages that I got, you know, by page number. So, your big moment. You know, it's a, like a guy giving a woman a rose or something. Uh, page five. It says, marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice. John uh, 5.28. And then it says, does someone call me? Arise. And it's like a lady in a coffin or something like that. Right there. Okay, so there's that. Casey's Story of Jesus, page 245. All right. And it's about halfway down the page, and it says, did I mark it? I thought I marked it. Remembered something. Well, I wrote 2.45, or I had her write 2.45. Remembrance. Yeah, I usually do this part before I go on the video. Okay, so it starts remembrance those experiences and that's it for this one they give me those three words remembrance those experiences that's the whole thing all right and for the chick track called the only way uh, we have two pages in here that gives us a message we have page three and if you don't like foul language and honest talk you probably better leave otherwise uh, we're going to have some, uh, probably some cussing. <laughs> I'm just feeling funky today. All right, so page three is like a, a, no, a blank-faced angel with uh, a lot of robes. But the part they showed me was, it says no, and he's pointing at a tree, and it looks like it's got cashews or mangoes on it, which is weird. Uh, no, mangoes are delicious, and they're healthy for you, too. So that's no... All right, and, oh, I missed yep, page three. Okay, and page nine. Page nine, let me get to see this. It's a picture of a bunch of people walking like zombies covered in what appears to be shit uh, with flies all over them. And then I see you, not like the hospital, <laughs> is uh, my wife, Kat. She, I read the messages, and I had her write them down, so we saved time that way. And that was her note, not, not the hospital. Like her and I, we sync really good, and we had the same information at the same time. All right, page seven. Okay, so page seven says there are people all around getting paid to watch you. And it's, uh, it's an illustration of a control room where people are watching everybody do bad things. <laughs> even, even the dog is being watched. See that? The dog right there. Could be a bear, but we'll call it a dog. But when Spirit showed me this, the part it showed me was that the you know the money and the 
the guy climbing in the house, breaking and entering, and this lady watching. All right, that's the last one. All right, so now for the interpretation, the part you've all been waiting for. Well, <clears throat> let me do this. Let me read it down. I'm just going to read the words as they're written on the page, and we'll see if it makes a message. Your big moment, page 5, John 5, 28. Marvel shall hear his voice, Casey's story of Jesus, remembrance of experiences, page 245. The only way, page 3, no, picture of cashew tree, page 9, picture of people with shit all over them and flies. I see you, not the hospital, page 7, a lady watches a guy breaking into a house, there are people, watch you. Okay, now let me, let me do it a little bit differently. Let me read it again with just the words, Marvel shall hear his voice. Remembrance, those experiences. No picture of a cashew tree. Picture of people with shit all over them and flies. Not the hospital. A lady watches a guy breaking into a house. There are people. Watch you. So, okay. I'm not going to put too much thought into it. I'm just going to call on spirit. Thank you, Spirit, for surrounding us with love and light, protecting us from those who do us harm, and guiding us on our path for our greater good. Thank you, God, uh, Spirit Creator, for guiding me to find the right messages to give the people at this moment. Blessed be. Okay, Marvel shall hear his voice. So something's going on this week um, with something miraculous, something marvelous. And a voice. Okay, uh, let's see. When I say this week, I mean, you know, uh, starting Monday the 29th, that week. So somebody's going to hear a voice. I'm seeing Donald Trump. I don't know. That's what they're showing me. Um, there's God. There's Donald Trump. Maybe Donald Trump is going to hear the voice of God. And Marvel has two meanings because you know for me marvel is always marvel superheroes and such like uh batman thor the hulk well okay batman's dc you guys know that um wonder woman i don't know what's the next marvel movie coming out uh remembrance those experiences this is a call for you this week to remember experiences wherein you were in other lives in past experiences. Now, I know I said experiences much time. Um, how can I clarify that? Spirit, help me clarify. Okay. Uh, Kuan Yin steps forth and says, you need to cleanse and purify past deeds and wrongs do not judge yourself, simply observe, understand and accept the things that you did in past lives. This is where karma comes in. It doesn't mean you're a bad person. And this week, it's important for you if you can do some, uh, you know, past life regression, or if you know how to contact your own Akashic records. You know, there's plenty of videos on YouTube um, I might do a video later, but you guys can go check that out. Um, yeah. But maybe, I'm also feeling like some of you, a lot of you, are just going to have a vibration and you're going to have memories just coming to you of times that you uh, lived that isn't this time. And here's the wacky thing. The reason you can do that is because we're actually living those times simultaneously. Uh, yeah, that's a topic for another time. So, past lives. Who were you in a past life? What were the things that you did? What were the good things? What were the bad things? Uh, you know, that you would judge bad by your current moral compass. And, and then try not to feel guilty about it. Instead, acknowledge it. Oh! Oh, it's going to be helpful for a lot of you to, you know, you should be journaling and stuff, you know. Journal. Journal, journal, journal. Write your shit down. 
because you think of it, then it's gone. Journal your dreams in the morning. Journal anytime you have a memory of something or a deja vu or some something that just seems weird. Journal it. Uh, anything that comes to you about past life. Maybe you lived in Egypt during the time of Moses. Maybe you lived in the desert during the time uh, that Jacob was murdering Canaanites to steal their land because God told him to. Maybe you were ancient, ancient Irish and Celtic um, uh, indigenous people. Like the white Europeans who were very similar to indigenous North uh, Native Americans. Anyway, have a ball with that. And of course, Asia. Maybe you were from East Asia, China, Vietnam, Korea. Here's something interesting to think about. Did China come from Korea? Some people think so. Might want to look into that. Spirit is telling me to share that with somebody out there. Also, this is kind of out of the blue, but I got to go with it. Spirit is telling me to share this. This is rose quartz. I don't know if you guys know about rose quartz. Somebody out there needs love this week. And rose quartz, it's a sort of pink, uh, translucent pink stone, which helps, helps you to feel pure and patient and love. So you put it in a room, and it just sends out the vibration of love. Uh, yeah, gentle, powerful healing properties, banishes nightmares, and helps you achieve your goals and heal from heartbreak. All right, enough of that. What's next? Uh, no picture of a cashew tree. Okay, so what this was telling me was no, the people need to know that Jesus isn't the only way uh, to heaven. A lot of people are, are scared, and we needed this for a long time. A uh, pastor was telling me the other day about something called dispensation, which is a theory, an idea, a concept that God punished people or treated people in different ways during different time periods based on their level of understanding and, and in essence I think their level of being able to be civil <laughs> and civilized. So, um, you know, and their social structure. So, what was I saying? But a lot of preachers out there you know, they, they, I mean, one of the main doctrines of Christ, of uh, religious Christianity, should we say, uh, Catholics and Protestants alike, um, one of the main doctrines is, uh, for God so loved the world, this is John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Also, Jesus is quoted as saying, I'm the truth, the way, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but by me. Unfortunately, as educated in Christian doctrine as pastors and priests and, you know, church leaders may be, many of them, you know, not all of them, they don't seem to understand the symbolic nature of, of the Bible and the things that were said and how it's not necessarily history and Jesus isn't the only way. A lot of people are just, I mean, we're all born with connection to spirit. We don't need priests, we don't need pastors, we don't need none of that unless we do. If we don't know how to handle our own shit, then we need uh, special support groups, which is what church does for a lot of people. That's it, plain and simple. Church is a support group for a lot of people. There's nothing wrong with that, as long as you realize that that's what it is and don't don't go trying to make your everybody else follow the rules of your club, which is really what a church, mosque, synagogue, any of that stuff, that's what it all is. You know, religions are clubs. And here's another thing I'll just throw out there. If people even pay attention to the Ten Commandments, it doesn't say anywhere that there's that they should believe that there's only one God. It says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. 
which presupposes that there's already other gods. Ding! Let that sink in a little bit. Okay. So this is what, what that was telling me. Um, Jesus isn't the only way. Christianity isn't the only way. Believing in original sin uh, it doesn't, you know, isn't the path to righteousness. Let's talk about cashews. Cashews, you can't eat them straight off the tree. Cashews like almonds, or not almonds, cashews like olives are inedible to humans and sort of poisonous. So what you have to do is you have to prepare them and make them so that they are edible. I don't know the process, you know, it might involve heat, it might involve pressure, it might involve chemicals, but whatever the process is, there's a transformation. So let's say alchemy. And what we're talking about this week is alchemy for your personal, your spiritual. You gotta transform yourself. You gotta do what it takes to transform yourself. If, if you're a Christian and you consider yourself a Christian and a follower of Christ, that's great. Transform yourself by understanding what it means. Start with reading your Bible. Get to a point that you don't understand. Make a note of that. You get to a point where it says, oh, you know, it looks like a conflict. This part said this and this part said that. Make a note of that. Don't just sit in your head and say, oh, well, that didn't quite be, but oh, well, pastor knows what they're doing. No, it's on each one of us to be knowledge, knowledgeable about what it is that we're dealing with in anything in life. Um, part of why I'm going to church is so that I can uh, learn how a good sermon is done and learn to be a better leader and learn to know my Bible better. Um, so let's move on. Uh, the, the picture of people with filth and stink all over them is interesting. It's you're, you're all covered in your own shit and you're blindly acting like zombies um, just following what they tell you and I'm not saying revolt against the man I'm just saying like God and spirit and the universe has always tried to tell us in every advanced form of spirituality philosophy or religion always in the end you find out no, the answer isn't out there. The answer isn't there. It's not up a mountain. It's not down a hill. It's not at the bottom of the water. It's not in a treasure chest. It's not in some guru. It's always inside. What's that mean? Because that can be a pretty confusing thing, right? What do you mean it's inside? If it was inside, wouldn't I know it already? Well, you do know, but you've forgotten. So it's like this. You've got a treasure or many treasures, you might say, of knowledge. But the key needs to be unlocked. It needs to be unlocked. How do you unlock your knowledge treasure? Honestly, a lot of it is just deep breathing meditation. A lot of us find, find it hard to get 15 minutes in the day to just sit down, uh, with no other distractions and breathe in and breathe out and breathe in and breathe out but if you could make yourself do it I mean it's 15 minutes you could cut out less angry birds times or less uh, responding to people on Facebook or whatever we've all got excuses or reasons why we don't want to do stuff you know this ties into what I was saying last video. If you haven't seen that, you know, go check it out. That was the message for last week. Or two weeks ago. I think it's a message from two weeks ago. In any case, <clears throat> it's about you healing past wounds by acknowledging the truth and I'm going to say it this way just to get it out there. Throwing off the shackles and restrictions of organized religion. 
does that mean that everything that the Bible says is wrong and we shouldn't listen? No. The Bible's a book just like anything else. Other book. The Bible's a source of wisdom just like any other source of wisdom. The Bible's a tool just like any other tool. Now, I know hardcore Christians who probably don't know their Bible that well are going to want to comment, the Bible is God's word. It's God's one and only word. You don't have to understand it. You just have to have faith in it. Well, I would postulate that that is a wrong application of faith. Um, if you read your Bible, God never said anywhere to have blind faith. But this is not... Uh, that's something for another time. This is not a preach about the Bible. <laughs> Some reason, though, Spirit is just bringing that to me right now. Somebody out there really needs to hear that this week. Okay, so let's move on. I see you, not the hospital. Lady watches a guy breaking into the house. Or people watching you. Okay, so <clears throat> it's making me feel like this week there's going to be an instance in the news where a guy or a person or you know a woman or a group of people they they break in somewhere or they commit some kind of mm, heinous was the word that came but um, also the word important I'm not sure if heinous is the right word um, a, a big crime you know something that people that's newsworthy across the nation or something People are going to see them do it and just stand there and not stop them. Um, am I saying if you see somebody committing a crime, you should stop them? No. I'm not saying you should or shouldn't. That's between you and spirit. Um, but right now, I'm just saying that's what they're showing me. Uh, is going to happen. And I don't read the news, guys. So I really, really, really appreciate uh, when you guys put comments below and let me know what I got right and what I got wrong. Okay. And... Oh, finally, just to wrap it up, people are watching you all the time. God is watching you. Spirit is watching you. This is not to make you afraid unless you're what would be considered a morally bad type of person. A lot of people out there only do good because they're afraid they're going to hell. That's why, he, that's why a lot of people have been sacrificed over the years. It's a big part of it. Uh, in order to keep the ruse up that, um, what do we call it? Well, I don't want to go into detail, but uh, if you know what I'm talking about, if you have the ears to hear and the eyes to see, let me know below. Thank you. Um, I love you all. Namaste. And have a great week.